I'm welcome to the commission for Tuesday, October 13, 22 order. The first item, Abby, is the roll call. Yep, and I have Brar, Murray, Paulson, Ramsey, Slavish, and Tyson as present. I did not yet see Schaefer. Let me just do one more quick look. Schaefer is not on. Okay, let's give him another minute, huh? <laughs> okay, so the first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. And uh, I have a note here that the Commissioner Tyson has requested various changes to the minutes. Uh, she has uh, changed to the original document. You want to make that motion with all your changes uh, included? Sure, I make that motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting with the changes as noted. Okay, need a uh, second. I'll second. This is Paulson. Okay, so the motion by Kitty Tyson and second by Kurt Paulson. Okay, all right. Any questions can, or comments? Can I just ask about the, it, hmm? Is yes. anyone else having so audio problems yes. hearing the mayor? A little bit. Okay. Um, oh. I just thought it was my machine. Mayor, your 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 audio is cutting in and out. Okay, so what is uh, can you hear me now? We can yes. now, yes. Yes. Okay, so maybe I need to change the orientation. How about now? Is it even better or about the same? It's about the same. It might have just been a, a, a internet glitch, but we, we can hear okay. you now. Thanks. Okay, all right. Okay, any other questions or comments? I will try to stay close to the iPad. So. Okay, I'll go in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So Abby, do you know if uh, John is there yet or not? I don't see John Schaefer. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's how it is, so. Okay, all right. We move on to the... That is the design review for downtown entryway mural at Roman Candle, 1920 Parmenter Street. Abby? Yes, um, if Daphne just wants to scroll to option one, <laughs> The arts committee let, um, met last night to discuss this and they are recommending option one with a few design modifications. Um, one of them being that rather than just have the single um, atomic starburst next to the L, they would prefer if there's at least one other one, they were concerned that with the phrase and just having one star, it may appear to be biblical or oh. religious. Um, and then they also suggested that the muralists look at the downtown Middleton logo. Um, that's the newly approved logo that the DMBA has selected and it has a series of buildings and they would like for the, the artists to incorporate some aspect of that mural in some artistic way. One idea being that right below the BOR in neighbor that they might just do the outline of the buildings, um, but they would in some way try to tie the mural more to the whole entire downtown rather than having it look like it's just related to Roman candle. Um, those starburst elements appear in a lot of the Roman candle marketing. So the recommendation from staff is to approve design mock-up one with the changes requested by the arts committee. So Abby, did they consider putting the city logo anywhere or does anybody think that that's a good idea? 
I think that the arts committee was hoping to steer away from having any specific logos, which is why they didn't they didn't recommend the downtown Middleton logo specifically because they want to make sure that it's art and not signage. Okay. There was a conversation about maybe using the city colors, but that didn't end up in the in the motion. Okay, that's all right. Okay, any other questions or comments from the commissioners now? Abby, this is Jen. Do you have, uh, or can someone uh, share the DMBA series of buildings with us and show us what that looks like? Yes. One second. Um, so this is the newly approved downtown Middleton Business Association logo. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking maybe just, you know, just a line drawing outlining the buildings in one of the colors from the logo, but not to actually paint all the detail of all the buildings and have it be a logo. But they also didn't want to dictate what the artists should do. So they were careful to just say, look at this for inspiration and then come back with some ideas for how we could incorporate it. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Um, you know, I'm not an artist and I'm not a good designer. So I'm inclined to support whatever the arts committee says. But in my mind, the term mural is a painting. This is mostly block text with a few embellishments. Um, I mean, I love the sentiment, mm -hmm. um, but you know, uh, it looks like a big sign with some embellishments, not a mural. Yeah, there was a discussion about that and the initial cost estimate that we got from Oh Yeah Studio was um, it included three options. And the only one that fell within the city's budget was the option that didn't have really any graphical elements. Um, I think though going in that the arts committee knew that this, this team works on textual phrases. They don't, they don't really do a lot of murals that show a lot of detail or like imagery. Um, I was gonna see if their website site if I could find where we could look at some of their other maybe it's on their Instagram page let me see if that will pull it up so um so here's some other examples I mean I guess this one that they did at the Monroe Street Fine Arts Center included people um they did this one on State Street recently about voting um like I said a lot of them include text and the concept that fit within the arts committee's budget was text only. It's a it's a really huge wall, and the cost is um, the cost is five thousand dollars to cover the whole wall. The other option would have been to go with something that had more graphic elements, but that was much much smaller. Um, and I think that the arts committee liked the idea of the impact that one large statement across the wall could make. I think that they also saw an opportunity for people to come down and want to get their picture taken with it with their friends or neighbors. Um, that's really common, like for Instagram, people like to, you know, have a photo with a statement. Um, so I, think uh, I mean, as, as long as the arts committee is okay with it, I don't want to second guess their judgment. Um, it's just, it's not, it's not super compelling to me, um, but it's kind of yeah. like a sign. And yeah, it looks like a sign. We would never find a mural that would be super compelling to everybody. Like we have this with every single project that the arts committee works on where it's pretty split 50, 50. Um, we've never, I don't think we've ever had a public art project in Middleton that everyone has embraced. Um, so anyway, I respect and appreciate your comments though. But that'd be, it, it does. That is a good point, though. I, I don't know if it's already too late in the process, 
they couldn't add anything to make it artistic. Um, if you want to send it back to the Arts Committee for additional consideration, that's within your purview to do that. Can, can I ask why, why is it before plan commission for design review if it's not a sign and it's not a structure and it's not a landscape feature? Is there a way that a commercial building requires design review? So like oh, okay. Club Tavern came, they were just changing the colors and that had to come for design review because it was a commercial structure. Okay. So this is considered like a repainting. Yes. For for five thousand dollars. So <laughs> well, okay, so any other questions or comments? It does have some artistic features. There's a heart in there. And uh, they're going to add a little bit more, so. I like, this is Jen. I like the idea of the, um, the series, the DMB series outline and adding some elements that um, set it in the place a little bit more um, and also provide a little bit of an abstraction so that it isn't um, maybe as literal as you know I think we're kind of talking about here so I like the idea that they're adding some other elements to it I support it it looks I think all three of them look great but I do like this one a lot yeah this is a lot more clear there are two others if you guys want to look at it but this is uh, CDA recommended this one as well so yeah, I would I would agree with Jen. I mean, I, I think of the three options. I mean, the other two were nice too, but kind of busy. Um, I thought this was a clear message, simple. Um, I, I like it. And, I, and the addition, Abby, that you mentioned, I would certainly be in support of that. Okay, so Mike, is that your motion then? And Jen, uh, are you going yes, to I'll second it? I'll make a motion uh, for approval with the recommendations that Abby made previously. I second. Okay. Uh, motion for approval by Mike Slavish and second by Jennifer. Okay, let the discussion begin now. So if there's a, anything Abby, you could make it make more like, <laughs> well, and you know, everybody will still welcome it. Otherwise, uh, all those in favor of the motion to approve, love your neighbor on, on, on this pizza place. So on the wall, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So Abby, yes. I'll, I'll okay. just abstain. I'm not, oh, okay. I'm not right. inspired. Okay, one abstain. Yeah. <laughs> Is John here or not yet? Not yet. Huh. That's interesting. Okay, now we are on to item number two. Set a public hearing for a conditional use permit for Carvajalu, however you pronounce it, 2332 Pinehurst Drive. I move to schedule a public hearing for November 10th at 7.15 p.m. Second. Okay, okay motion by Kurt Parson, second by Dan Ramsey. Okay, any questions or comments? Otherwise, yeah. I'll go down. Mm -hmm. Mark, we, didn't, we did not have anything in our packet about what this would look like, right? It's just reusing, it's just the use of within an existing building. So there's nothing okay. to present at this point, but we will provide you, basically what it is, is using a portion less than half of the building, an existing building um, for a use that's a conditional use in that district. And the zoning there is industrial, industrial or B3? Industrial, okay. Industrial. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion to set a public hearing for a conditional use permit for 2332 Pinehurst Drive for car results, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. Okay, now we're on to a big thing here. 
concept review for Nepato Part 6413 University Avenue. Daphne for Abby. Yeah, you can take this. Um, so this is um, Napa Auto Parts. Um, I believe they were at the last meeting as well, um, also for concept review, but they did submit um, some additional changes. And um, the um, director of public works wanted um, me to let everyone know that these new plans, um, the engineering staff haven't completely looked um, through all of them yet. So there, there are still some additional comments that will have to be addressed um, later. Um, and then also they wanted um, the plan commission to um, take into consideration the sign, the proposed sign that is in future right of way, as well as um, to the right of this, there's the Scooter's Coffee um, monument sign. And so they're still um, in deliberation about that, but they just wanted um, plan commission to be aware of those two signs and um, maybe make some recommendations um, maybe not at this one, but at a few in the future um, meetings about this time. Daphne, yeah, is the the proposed sign the only one is to the west of the driveway apron, right? Yes, this this is the okay. only proposed sign for Napa. Yeah. And this is Jen. I believe the scooters, we did not allow the signage in the right of way. I think yeah, the, common council, the common council is recommending approval of the signage in the right of way. They're kind of trying to do whatever they can to help support businesses right now. Um, but what I've learned from our public works director is that because this is right of way that was previously state and turned over to the city, there's a process by which we have to appeal um, the use of the right of way for that purpose. And Sean thinks it could take six months to a year before we get approval. So it's going through the process and they have to pay to buy that part of the land. So then it will be theirs. Other questions? I think it, uh, it looks really, looks good. And uh, it, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think the way it is laid out, it will do anything to the scooter sign. So I think it will work out pretty well. Yeah, and the owner of the building where Scooters is located um, mm. attended the neighborhood meeting and he didn't express any concerns about um, the site plan as shown. And also the person who owned the apartments uh, west of there seemed to be very supportive of it. It seemed like it just, uh, a little bit uh, north of where the Rusties used to be, <laughs> which is sort of interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, Can I ask a, mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. I wanted to ask a question on the landscape plan, and it may not be showing up on my screen, but as I understand it, in the south of the building, uh, they're going to be using that more for, um, I think, vehicle storage of their delivery trucks. And I just want to make sure, I mean, I, it, this is more an SIP, but I just want to put down in the notes that we want to make sure that there's appropriate screening on the Southern property line to the, because there's homeowners, um, there's single family homes on the South, right? Yep. Yes. So let's just make sure that the notes reflect that there's appropriate uh, screening or, or because I don't see any trees on that southern side. There's a fence, um, but I don't know what height that fence is going to be. Yeah, Kurt, this is Jeremy from Old Iconica. Yeah, there's an existing six foot fence since there, cedar with um, uh, it's kind of got uh, split face block columns um, that runs that whole whole uh, property line. So, but is there any vegetation there or is there a plan to, I guess? There are, uh, there are a number fence. of trees on the neighbor's property all along mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. They're kind of starting to grow over this property line, but it's it's pretty well um, vegetated. On their property? On their property, yeah. Yeah, usually we try to use enhanced vegetative screening between Kind of business uses and residential uses right 
would you guys be averse to putting in um well, I don't know what, what you'd put in there, Arborvita or something? I don't know. Boy, that's what I was thinking too. So, <laughs> I mean, Where, look where's nice. Leaf when we need him? He's a landscape architect. Uh, yeah. Um, well, at the parking lot, we're between the fence and our um, curb line. There's like 10 inches, 12 inches. There's really nothing to provide any planting, not enough room. Um, I, I'm talking between the spaces that are south of the building in the south property line. Yes. Yep. Just something That's to consider at the SIP stage. And it would actually be the design. Well, actually, field. there's not an SIP. It's, yep. it's, it's going to rezone to. That's right. B2. Thanks. Yeah. It's design review because it's rezoning back to B3. B2. B2. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah I, I guess, you know, it's always good things soothing the below the fence. You want it to look at good in any case. I'm sure you will consider. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, go ahead. This is Jen. I just want to ensure there's bi bicycle parking provided in the final. Uh, we did not have any bike parking at this time, but um... We can look at some locations. Is that something that would be allowed in that right away? Because we're right up against two easements on the what University Ave side. Well, you have 35 spots, I, I understood from last meeting. So maybe uh, you can forego a few of those for bike parking. Yeah, we took it down to 31 stalls right now. Um, and you're only required to have 20, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, so it, I think that's if it's if it's auto, and this is really retail, um, which maybe, yeah, you still might be right. It might have been at 20, because I think it's 14 for auto. So uh, we kind of did, you know, talk with the owner about that, how he got to that number of needing that. Um, you know, he's basically got six delivery vans, um, 10 to 12 employees at a time. So we're leaving about 13 stalls total uh, for customers. Um, but I, I'm sure we can find some bike parking on the site somewhere. More questions? My biggest concern is the fact that we're moving buildings closer to university again and uh, running driveways off university again, as opposed to trying to find alternative ways to do that, such that we've got um, the businesses and activities facing, not, not facing our, our prime, what do we call it, principal arterial other road, our primary principal arterial road in this town. But perhaps there are other options that could be looked at because when you look at the back side of this, it could be altered to um, eliminate those parking spaces on the south side and, and actually turn it into a, a road back there. So mm -hmm. it's possible to change it in the future to make it comply if we were to ever rethink the way we want to handle University Avenue. But that, I think, is another question for another meeting or another topic. Okay. Abby, can, can I follow up with that? Um, yes. Abby, is this building is this building further back from the street than what the uh, approved um, Commonwealth uh, apartment building was? I thought that was a little even closer to the street. I don't think so, but I am not sure. I could try to pull it up quickly. It's, don't I, worry. I, I think I had a note from a previous uh, the previous time uh, I looked at this, and it was twenty eight foot setback from the street or from the right of way. Well, there that says twenty six, and that's from the property line. So I think it's reasonably comparable uh, to what okay. Univer um, University Flats was. That's the name of. 
Okay. I mean, I, I had the opposite view, I think, of Commissioner Tyson, which is it seems to be another auto-oriented strip use where the building is oriented to the parking lot rather than the street. But that's just a different design approach of what we think University Avenue should be in, in 10 or 20 years from now. So it's not, it's not anything that we would um, think about in terms of this review. That's where a University Avenue corridor plan would be helpful, which I know is in the budget yeah. for next year. Yep. Well, we had that build plan and you're going to start from there, Abby, right? Um, well, we have funds in the budget to kind of start from scratch with the planning process because that you know, that build plan now is 10 plus years old. So I think yeah. we have to start over. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Still, it's something to start with, so. Okay, any other questions or comments or input? Now, this is only for input. There's no approval needed here or there is? Concept approval, I believe. Okay. Okay, so do I have a motion for concept approval? Um, Ramsey will move approval concept. Yeah to rezone back to B2? Back to B2. I'll second that, Slavish. Just to clarify, the rezoning isn't before you tonight. It's uh, they wanted review of the concept and you can you can talk about that you endorse that concept, but the formal action on the rezoning is at in two weeks. Oh, okay, okay. then we'll just, go, we'll just go with the- uh, you're Just, just the concept. The concept okay. review. Okay, I would prefer so you not talk about the concept, that. okay. I would recommend you not really address the rezoning as part of the motion. Oh, thank you, Mark. Because we haven't had the public hearing, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments now? Uh, this is Jen, so can we make friendly amendments subject to engineering comments and the sign placement um, deferred subject to land acquisition or some something that doesn't put that as part of the decision relative to the setback issues and the the uh, sorry the um, the land acquisition issues or should we decide that tonight? Um, Jen, concept review isn't binding on the on the plan commission on the city. Um, I think those are all issues that I, I'm going to document here that that uh, and I have been documenting, so those can be incorporated into the next meeting. When okay. you do a formal design review in conjunction with the rezoning request. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, that's all right. Who was the second on the motion? Uh, Slavish. 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 Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, Mayor, this is Tim Carey calling, and I'm uh, the developer of this property. And I guess this is the second time that we've been into a, a concept review, and I'm hearing some mixed um, mixed comments about this project. And I guess I'd, I'd like to get a little bit more clarity, the expectation is that at the next meeting in two weeks, we will seek and hopefully receive approval for both the zoning change and the, the entire plan approval. It is my requirement that I go hard on this purchase a week after that. And uh, because we've been through this uh, concept review now a couple of times, uh, without, I'm, I guess I'm thinking without clarity as to what the plan commission will support, uh, I'm hopeful that maybe Jeremy, who is the architect of this project, could reiterate some of the, the design challenges and the requirements or the suggestions made by the city relative to why we ended up with this design and with this parking layout. So Jeremy, if you could just quickly speak to that, I think it might be helpful. Uh, and again, my objective is simply not to have the same kind of, of discussion two weeks from now without clarity. And I agree with you. I'm in fully support of it. Jeremy, go ahead. Yeah, Abby, could you go back to um, just that first site plan that just like two pages up, I think. <clears throat> Might show that easement a little better. So some things we're taking into consideration is that the storm easement that runs from the south side of the site um, kind of goes off to the east and then right up to um, University Avenue. So that really kind of dictated, you know, how and where we place our building. 
Um, so we came up with a solution uh, to get it up in the corner. Uh, the front face does face uh, the parking lot, um, but that had a lot to do with um, the internal layout of the building itself. With retail is really on the east half of the building and their, their stock and warehouse is to the west. Um, so that had to do with their operations and wanting people to come in the front door. So if we were to turn the building to the front, then we'd have needed a sidewalk to the front to entry and it would have gotten far away from the parking lot. So trying to get the customers close to the front door as possible was a goal of ours. Um, and then to the south of the site, yeah, that is where they do deliveries at night. Um, their delivery vans park there and load during the day and then they're in and out of the, out of the facility. Um, at night, those um, vans will park in the, the parking lot up, more up front, not to the back. Um, so those are just some of the constraints. We did also want to use the, you know, the, the, the site slopes from, um, I'll just call it west to east. Um, so using our stormwater management, we wanted to get it where it is right now. Um, we have to enlarge it, but we're in that, uh, in that east corner. Um, so all those kind of played a role into, you know, how we located the building in, in this location. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions for uh, Jeremy or Kai? Yeah, I, I think. No, I, uh, hmm? Yes, go ahead. Well, I was I was just going to say to 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 Tim and Jeremy, um, don't take my comments as you know that I would vote against. I would vote in favor of the rezoning and the site plan. It's just I realize there's constraints on the site. It's just the the use there is it just you know it's a standard commercial use in a commercial strip, and that's understandable. Um, but you should also know that if we uh, recommend approval after the public hearing for rezoning, uh, it would still have to go to council before the rezoning would be effectuated. Thank you, Kurt. Any questions for Kurt or anyone else who has comments? I, I think uh, you know the way it's laid out is somewhat well. I, I mean, you know, you want the customers to come over there, park it, and go into the business, and that's how it's more convenient. So, and uh, to me, it looks pretty good. So, any question, Kitty? You have some questions or comments? Anyone? No, else? no. I well, the the one thing I the comment I made earlier just related to what happens in the future if we change the way we use University Avenue. And what I was saying is that this layout looks like it's very conducive to a potential change. Okay. That's all. So you otherwise uh, the motion was made by Elder Dan Ramsey. It is seconded by Mike Slavish. All those in favor of the motion to approve the concept say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. Okay, we are on to item number four. Special campus plan modification, addition to lot 10 anger at 23310 Bravo Lane. Here, this one's Mike, mine. Mark. Patrick Egan, uh, the applicant, and Gary Buns, the owner, are both uh, mm -hmm. present. I did forward to you this afternoon a revised staff recommendation, um, and I'll quickly read that. Uh, this is just for context. This, again, is the uh, addition would be on the north side of one of the multi-tenant hangar buildings, uh, so it's not visible from the road. It faces the runway. Um, the uh, revised staff recommendation is to uh, recommend approval as a minor modification of the airport SIP contingent on the council approval of the revised hangar land lease agreement that includes the building and expanded parking area. The use of amended, so that's the first one. The second one is the use of amended engineered soil, two feet in depth and occupying roughly 25% of the building footprint around the relocated stormwater inlet with coverage by low profile native plants that are not a wildlife attractant. And third, resolution of engineering or fire department staff comments because there's a hydrant being relocated and we wanna make sure that that um, meshes with, with their concerns, that that complies with their uh, requirements. Well, so I that's the uh, that'll be my motion since you just read it. Well, I would add the fourth one. That is, uh, this is subject to city attorney's approval. 
And uh, yeah, Mike and I had a good discussion. So it is uh, going to have to go to Larry. Because so, of the land lease, for what reason, Mayor? Yeah, for land lease, there are four tenants or four or five, whatever number of tenants are there. And, so that's uh, covered by the first, uh, that's covered by the first bullet, council approval of a revised hangar land lease agreement that includes no, the bill. No, it still has to be approved by Levy, so. Okay. Yeah. The council and city attorney, attorney approval. approval. Yes. I mean, I presume the council wouldn't approve it without the attorney's approval anyway, but. Well, anyway, I would want fine. that to be part of it, so. Sure. So, yes. So that's, that's my motion, yeah. Third. Okay, and Giddy, you are making a second or who is? Uh, no, I'm, I wanted to ask a oh, question. Oh, you have a question. Okay, is there a second? Ramsey, a second. Okay, motion by Kurt Paulson, second by Dan Ramsey. Okay, Kitty, what? Um, I'm, I'm looking, I had looked through the materials we received before and I was looking for a, an architect and I don't see it. So I'm, I'm asking if the building inspector has taken a look at this because adding office type space, unless it's just, um, what's, what's the term? Um, not incidental, but uh, ancillary or uh, auxiliary, auxiliary, auxiliary accessory, accessory, accessory use. The, the question is, it's a, a hangar is typically viewed as a hazardous occupancy and therefore potentially you need a fire rated wall to separate the ancillary use or not. I don't know that in, in this particular building type and I would want to have our building inspector check that to make sure we're on the up and up. Okay, so you would like to be the part of the somehow? I don't, I don't need to be a part, Gurdeep, but I'm just asking that we check and make sure it's meeting, that adding an office um, ancillary use like that is, is to a hangar is meeting building codes. There will be able to meet building codes. So when, Mark when and Eddie, and they do they do somewhat address that in the code summary little section there. So um, they, they talk about having two hour fire barrier separation between the separate occupancies. So th there is some some wording to that, but I, yeah, I agree. We need to make sure that it follows all applicable codes. So mm -hmm. this is for Mark and Abby. This has to go to the fire department. I know you mentioned that because I did go and see the fire hydrant, it's very close to it. Unless it's approved by the fire department, it isn't going anywhere. So that is, that's absolutely essential. And uh, the second is, uh, which I mentioned to Mark as well earlier and also to Mike. So there are several tenants on this one. I don't know who the owner is. And uh, so they they all have to, well, somehow Larry has to prove it. I don't know what is the situation here. I mean, are they going to be all owners of this or there's only one person who is the owner of this part or what is uh, the situation here? But those other people, you know, they have to agree to it. It uh, can be just a unilateral decision by one person in the corner there. Mayor, the architect and the owner are both on the call and could, I'm sure, answer those questions about building code and ownership. Yeah, this is Patrick Egan. I'm the architect. I'd be happy to uh, kind of respond to um, Ms. Tyson's question. Um, yes, you're absolutely right. There's the, uh, uh, the accessory use uh, limitation of 10% of the building area, uh, which we do fall under. Um, that's where you trigger the separated uses, uh, the fire barriers between the occupied spaces. We do fall under that. Okay. Um, I have full intent and I've already filled out the forms to send these plans to the city for a full plan review, building plan review. Um, uh, the building itself is 16,500 square feet. The addition uh, outside the building is 650. Uh, the building itself is split in half with a uh, the fire barrier, then that's that's really driven by uh, fire area limitations based on the construction type. So uh, we've tried to stay within those thresholds to start requiring 
uh, fire rated assemblies and barriers uh, and to keep it in that auxiliary accessory category. Excellent. Excellent, Patrick. I noticed you had a nice fire code or a nice code summary on the first page, and that's always appreciated. Yeah, and then we still, I still need to go through it, tighten it up before I send it to the city, but th those were the, the due diligence things that we were working through. Um, Excellent. And, and you know, it plays into the construction type as well, what we're, what we're building it out of. And if you do require a fire rated wall separating the two, you will provide it as required, no doubt. Absolutely. Good. So Patrick, while you are there, so uh, I asked Mark, what is the width and height and uh, breadth of this? What are the dimensions of this building? Sure. It, it's so, just the addition. Sure. So the the hangar itself. No, I'm just only only talking about the what you are adding to it. Only that. Yeah, I was just going to give it to you for context. Um, okay. But so the hangar itself is sixty feet wide. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's 18 feet tall. The proposed okay. addition is 36 feet wide, and it'll be 10 feet tall uh, back at the door. Actually, it'd be just under 10 feet because we have some sloping, so it's really more like nine and a half. And it it projects out from the building 18 feet eight inches. So in this image that you see, it's that that two toned uh, color. The colors are a little wonky because of the printing, but it's that that tan color actually matches the existing building. Okay. And then it'll just so, have a blue accent on the bottom. So 36 feet wide, 8 feet and 8 inches, uh, um, well, 36 feet long, 8 feet and Correct. 8 inches wide, and 10 feet tall, right? Correct. Okay. okay, all right. Yeah, I did look through your graphics. Uh, you know, I did try to magnify it, but there's no, anyway. And so any other questions for Patrick or uh, anyone else? I do have one comment, Mr. Mayor. If, uh, so now I did. If I can get in here. Mm -hmm. This is Gary Bunn's uh, oh, go ahead. property. Hi there. Um, mm -hmm. I think you asked about the other owners. Um, I've not only spoken yep. with the other owners, I just compiled a list of, and this is by far not a complete list of all the people I've spoken to, because I actually proposed this project about two and a half years ago. And um, mm -hmm. due to health reasons of the person, which is probably the main reason I'm doing this, um, I, we weren't able to move forward at that time, but we are now. And over that period of time, those two and a half years, I've spoken with virtually everyone on not quite, but virtually everyone on Taxiway Alpha, Taxiway Bravo, all the way down to the far end of the airport, um, and including people that work at Mori Airport, and including the gentleman that I would say predominantly takes care of the snow plowing and, um, uh, and, the, and the mowing. And regarding snow plowing, it will make zero effect for him. Um, but as far as the mowing goes, he feels the way they have this uh, graveled or landscape, it's actually gonna be a lot quicker for him and a lot easier for him. And that's uh, Greg Jelnick that takes care of it for Murray Airport, works for Murray Airport. Um, of everybody I've talked to, and that's in excess of the 27 that I have just put down on the list, I have yet to, including the people that I own that building with, I have yet to run into any opposition whatsoever. Um, I've had some good questions like, why are you doing it? Or, um, you know, will you do this or this? But um, I've had zero opposition um, with everyone I've spoken to. So why are you doing it? Let's say, what was great your answer? <laughs> and and I'm, that, it's a great question. And I'm gonna go back to exactly what I said um, uh, in February at the airport meeting. Um, I, my partner in the plane is he's an elder gentleman he's 83 years old um due to his mental sanctity and probably a little bit the relationship with his wife he wants to get out of the office every day like he has for the past 60 plus years and or get out of the home every day like he has for the last 60 years <laughs> and um and he he comes to the office now we are in a building in fitchburg currently he mm -hmm. lives over in westport 
Um, at 83 years old, he's got to do the belt line every single day. And um, I think he's at a point in life where it's not adding life to his life. It's actually starting to take away a little bit. And uh, um, as much as I do, even more so with his wife and his family, they worry about him. So um, a couple of years ago, I came up with the idea that uh, if it would be possible to add a very small, you know, it's really essentially a tool shed that we're going to put desks in. It's a small, small area, 670 square feet, but um, a small office off the hangar, someplace he really loves. He's passionate about it. He is a rather inactive pilot. And um, um, he literally can pull out of his driveway, turn left and drive into the airport grounds several miles down the road. So um, uh, it's, it was highly motivated by um, getting him uh, off the belt line and an easier view for him to get or easier way for him to get to the office. Um, he, he's very, very active in that. I would say last week, for example, he beat me to the office three out of the five days. And that's probably common. <laughs> And he's, he's 83 and you're not quite there yet, right? I am a long, yeah, yeah. Well, some days I feel that way, but I'm a long way from it. But my, my hat's off to him. So that was the motivation behind it. But we were both very, very passionate about, um, about what we do, the airport, why we use it. And uh, I just think it would be a great fit if we can get it done. And I also think it would be extremely, uh, an extremely good fit for him as well. Well, it's good it has a deck at the top so he can sit, well, probably will spend when it's nice weather on the top rather than inside, hopefully. So. I hope that's the case. <laughs> so you do know that there are other, well, I mean, I did go and visit the site and I also talked to the others that uh, the all other people, they have their offices indoor and considering what you're telling, they say you're helping out a 83 year old gentleman. They, they sound like, a, you know, it looks nice too. So, but it is outside of the hangar. So yeah. Anyway, other questions either for Patrick or Gary or any or Abby or Mark. Okay. Yes. I guess the only thing I might add is um, rather than extend the entire hangar, which um, would have been cost prohibitive for us, that's why we kind of added on that little centerpiece. Um, uh, it's a very inexpensive way to try and accomplish um, what we were after, if it makes sense. Yeah, I was wondering yesterday, are you going to go the whole length or a part of it? So yeah, makes sense. So, yeah. Okay, if there are no more questions, uh, so this is the SIP approval with the, all those four conditions. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. Okay, Gary and Patrick, uh, you can go ahead and celebrate. I guess it needs to go to the council, but <laughs> all right. Thank we you very much. The... Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. So yourself as well. Okay. Item number five. Concept review and set a public hearing for a conditional use permit for Walt Middleton 7913 Airport Road. Mark. Yes, this uh, has been for you in concept uh, and they are revising the concept a bit, which is why I recommended to them that they uh, share that with you again tonight as you set the public hearing for the next meeting. Um, they have discovered that they cannot have access off of Airport Road according to DOT rules with the access management rules. And uh, they, um, well, I guess that was the main change. They've, they've changed the architecture that, you know, the design of the building is, is quite a bit changed as well. So I, I suggested they come here tonight at this meeting to get any feedback you have. And then at the next meeting, they'll have the hearing on the, on the uh, conditional use. It, it does look very nice, those good pictures. Okay, any, well, let the questions or comments begin. Uh, I, have a, I have a question yeah. as you know, I, I happen to be driving by today and um, that site um, currently has one or two homes. And I guess my only question is I, I don't see the parcel lines here. Are they removing all of the homes in that area? Because 
if one of the homes remains, it's it's a pretty intense use right next to it. Um, it doesn't look like it uh, on the we, site. We are, not, we are not removing any homes. Uh, yeah. the, the site just has a bunch of trees on it. There's no structures on it. Yeah. That's okay, so the, I... so the home is just immediately to the east of it. That is correct. Correct. And you don't own that parcel. It's just the just the for, just the wooded parcel. That is correct. Yeah, that's what I thought. This was the wooded parcel. There's a lab to the right. east of it, which is uh, doing the plant tissue culture, and then this one here. So, okay, well, good question, Kurt. So, can I add and, the uh, answer? Okay, or may I, and, and may or may I add yeah. the answer? Uh, uh, this whole area, the entire yes. block. The entire block is zoned B3, just for- Right, 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 uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, well, so we need to, uh, so need a motion to schedule the hearing on Tuesday, November 10th at 7.05 p.m. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. um, the other question is, did you, you know, have any comments on the elevations uh, so that, it, you know, to try and forestall any issues that might come up uh, in two weeks. That, so I'm okay. suggesting that they that you probably yes. provide feedback. Yeah. Any other? And the height, part, the height is Excuse within. Me, here now. Is, is it within the zoning? Is the height mm -hmm. within the zoning? Yeah. It, what was the height of the oh, building? Absolutely. I, absolutely yes. I'm sure it's under 35 feet. They can, they can answer yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. It is. On the, on the low side, it's 25 feet. Good question. 26 on the high side. Any other questions? I think these buildings, the way they are designed, from what I what I see, the rent, if uh, the building looks like what the rendering is, that actually looks nice. So can't complain. For, for storing the cars, of course, these are expensive cars. <laughs> Gotta look nice. <laughs> Those cars will be very <laughs> well. I guess there's no happiness in the cars. They will be well kept there. Well, any other questions or comments? So, so well, okay, I make I, a motion I to set the. Would like to ask, just uh, make a comment. I'm once again, I'm thrilled here with uh, the project data chart on on uh, page A2. Um, it's great to see that you guys have gone through and have identified fire resistive ratings of zero hours for all of these. Is how did you conclude that? By the way, that, well, that there's no hazard rating for all these garages. Sure, no, that's a very fair question, and because we are only storing automobiles for personal private use, um, it falls under a low hazard storage occupancy. So, virtually any other type of storage occupancy, say it were boats or RVs or commercial style vehicles, we would be required to have a one hour separation. Eric, are you the architect? You're with yes, the UA? Okay. Yep. I've never seen that recorded in any of the um, uh, car storage lot or car storage business or whatever, <laughs> which is why I'm asking. I've just never seen it listed. So I don't know how you would interpret that. But it, it sounds logical and I'm, I, I have no reason to debate it. Um, it looks like there's just one door, one car door, as opposed to a people door. I presume you're gonna go through and make all those uh, schematic design changes as you evolve it. Yeah, right now we think with the size of each garage, um, we, can, we can do that, um, but we may potentially look at adding a few man doors per unit, depending on how these lease up. Yeah, I, I was of the understanding you always had to have a man door as opposed to just a, a car door in case it stops functioning. But at any rate, that's not the subject of what we're considering right now. And you can deal with that later. <laughs> yes. That's the design we issue. A, we have a state review coming up. So um, I'll be sure to double check that certainly. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Mm -hmm. All right, any more questions for Eric? Otherwise, I'm going to make a motion to set a public hearing for Tuesday, November 10th at 7.05 p.m. I need a second. Second. Okay, second by Kurt. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 aye.
Anyone opposed? Okay, guys. So, Mayor, can I? I Mm -hmm. I'd like Sorry. to make a motion to um, for concept approval. Oh, okay. And I and I had intended to include that in the uh, recommendation, and I was just going to mention it when you asked for the vote. So I think that okay. All you right. put that with the previous, or are you do yeah, just put it with the okay. yeah. You can put it with the previous. Okay. Let's add to that one. So okay, it's okay with me. So okay, let's have a all those in favor of the motion to set a public meeting and the approval of the concept say aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. All right. right. Mayor, the way I'm recording it for the minutes, uh, just so I, we're on the same page, is the motion is to endorse the revised concept and to schedule the hearing for. So that's how the motion will read, if that's what. Phenomenal. That's a great okay. way to go, right. Mark. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we are on to now the exciting stuff here. Kitty, are you ready? Oh, oh sure. Thank you. Abby, are you ready? <laughs> well, I actually read through, went through all the comments and I went, uh, I went to the medicine website and looked at their, <laughs> their uh, comprehensive plan as well. I can't say that I read both parts of them and uh, can't say that I spent uh, the whole day on that one. I spent big part of the day on Middleton and some part on medicine. So, <laughs> okay, so how do we want to handle it? Start with Kitty then? Um, I have a brief presentation just yes, going let's over start the Abby. back. Yes, Abby, let's go. Um, okay, hold on. I just need to share screen. All right. So um, let's see here. All right. So at the last, at the September 22nd meeting, the plan commission referred the comp plan out to 10 separate committees and then subsequently, we've had three additional committees or commissions that have asked to see the document. So we've added those to the list um, and we've taken the document now to seven committees. And um, so I just wanna go through the feedback that we've received to date from the different committees. Okay, go ahead. The airport, the airport commission by consensus supported the transportation section. Um, they had some minor changes. For example, they wanted to consistently use the airport identifier as C29, remove gender specific references. Um, there were a couple of instances where we referred to the airport manager as he. Um, they wanted to rearrange one section to discuss the origins of the airport first and then talk about the flight operations, flight school operations later. They had some revisions to the language around noise complaints. And then um, maybe the most substantive issue, there was an action statement that talked about protecting airspace and all approach pathways, but it referred specifically to buildings and power lines. And they asked for that language to be broadened. Um, for instance, trees can also impact minimums and instrument approaches. Um, our staff is recommending inclusion of all of the feedback from the airport commission. The second committee is the CDA. Um, they went over many sections of the plan in detail, not just the character section. They looked at housing and transportation. They were very supportive of the plan overall. Um, they did ask for there to be some additional language around the community campus plan goals. Um, it's repetitive in the document. There are two separate sections where we talk about the community campus plan. So they wanted us to remove one of those and then just expand the language on one of the sections where we keep it. They also <laughs> had some questions around a chart that's on page nine of the document. And they asked whether um, this, this statistic about over a month, people who walk to the downtown spend up to 40% more than people who drive. They wanted to clarify, is that time or is that money? And it is money. Um, and our staff is recommending inclusion of all the CDA comments. CLC met and they were the first committee to review the document. They had a lot of really good feedback and they asked before making a recommendation for us to bring it back before them for a special meeting. So that will be going to CLC tomorrow night and then we'll bring back their feedback. PRFC um, met and discussed it. They expressed some concern about some of the wording um, related to street trees. They specifically wanted to make sure that it's clear in the document that all trees are important, not just street trees. 
um, they had a really good suggestion about an action statement about um, using appropriate tree species for climate mitigation. Specifically, they thought we could develop a call out box that might be really interesting for people to read and educate themselves about what tree species would be appropriate. And um, Kelly is gonna work with Mark Wagner and put um, that language together. They really liked keeping the broad vision and goals in the plan, but they suggested modifying some of the language around the amount of planning that the city staff will be doing. Um, they were concerned that it wasn't realistic based on current staffing levels. So they asked for a review of the document and replaced the word shall with words like may to set more realistic expectations, but to still keep the broad idealistic um, visions and goals. Um, the staff also provided some comments and those were incorporated into the PRFC recommendation. Specifically, they noted that, that there is an update underway for the parks and open space plan and that the two documents should be reviewed for consistency with one another. Um, I have been working now with Becky Benz from MSA um, to make sure that we're, we're taking care of that comment. Um, they also noted that one of the comments that had been made about at Conservancy Lands Commission to eliminate or reduce the use of pesticides might need to be tempered. The staff is really very supportive of this goal for the city, but they noted that organic alternatives can oftentimes be more costly and less effective. Um, and our staff is recommending inclusion of all the changes that PRFC recommended. Um, Public Works Committee met last night. They had a whole long list of edits that were mostly typos, text that was crowded on pages, or charts that just needed a higher resolution. They also asked for some more um, fleshed out definitions. Right now, the Green City section has definitions, but some of the other sections do not yet. Um, so we still need to work on that definition section. That was a good point. And then the last comment that they had was not really related to a public works committee item, but they suggested that we emphasize stronger support for first responders and noted that the national average for police officers is 2.4 officers per thousand residents and we're at 1.8 per thousand. Um, our staff is suggesting incorporation of the first two comments that were made at Public Works Committee, but we would like to wait on this comment until the Public Safety Commission has a chance to weigh in and possibly EMS and um, the Fire Commission as well, if it's appropriate, before we would bring back any, any language um, surrounding this. Tourism Commission met at 4 p.m. today. Um, they suggested that the, um, there be a change made to some language about an action step for pushing travel green certification for the hotels. They think that the Wisconsin Department of Tourism isn't pursuing this anymore. Um, so we need to look into that a bit and I, a couple of the hoteliers that are on the commission are gonna get us some more info. Um, tourism was particularly interested in transportation um, they operate the free trolley that circulates throughout the downtown. They also were very interested in e-bikes and micro transit opportunities. Um, one commissioner noted a preference for micro transit because it could be used by tourists year round. Um, they also noted that the plan gives a very good snapshot and roadmap for the city. Our staff is recommending inclusion of all the comments by tourism. The library board also met tonight. Um, they would like to work with us a little bit on fleshing out more how the library can assist with resiliency and disaster planning. Um, we had a broad overarching goal about that, but they are particularly interested in pursuing that. Um, we talked a little bit about an idea for a microgrid that could be within the community campus plan and help with resiliency during power outages and serve as kind of a central hub where residents could go and um, use power and, and possibly access other resources. And they also would really like to include some language about helping the community heal post COVID. Um, the library has a lot of resources available for job support and other things that are gonna be really needed um, once we get on the other side of this pandemic. And so they would like to develop some language around that and they're gonna send it to us. Um, they also noted the need to edit some of the language around the community campus plan. It was pretty similar comments that were made at the other committee, so we'll make sure to get that included. Um, page 81 includes a local landmarks map, and they asked for a legend to identify individual landmark sites. And then they also would like to have a call-out box included with a little bit more history of the Ho-Chunk and in the Tree Jop region. Um, I think we have a bit of language that Kelly worked with um, a representative of the Ho-Chunk Nation 
um, to develop, but we would like to um, beef that up a bit more because there was just a lot of interest in learning more about the history. Our staff is recommending inclusion of all the library board comments. Um, so our recommendation tonight is to direct staff to prepare um, three, different, uh, three additional pages that would kind of summarize the goals in the introduction section. So there'd be one page of short-term goals, one of medium-term and one of long-term. We think that this can help a bit with the concern that the document is 150 pages, nobody's gonna read every single word, um, but to have a summary of kind of the long-term, short-term and medium-term goals in the, right in the beginning might be helpful for people to understand and digest the document. And then we would like for the commission to direct staff to incorporate all of the feedback from the commissions with the exception for the time being of that first responder comment, we'd like to wait for public safety commission span. At the 922 meeting, there were a couple of comments that it seemed like the commission was um, gaining support for. One of them would be um, including some housing yield projections and also some modifications to the future land use map, which would treat low density housing more similar to how Madison treats low density housing in their comp plan, where they have a category that covers um, you know, single family, duplexes, accessory dwelling units, and I think. I think maybe triplexes and, and fourplexes as well. We have had a meeting about that. Um, we're, we're continuing to pursue that and we're planning to bring back some ideas uh, for the plan commission and, and possibly the workforce housing committee to consider. I also included in your packets some commissioner feedback from Tyson as well as Paulson. And so those items should also be discussed and included in any recommendation for what you would like to direct staff to modify within the document. Um, Commissioner Tyson has a presentation that she would like to give. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And then Daphne is gonna pull up the presentation and um, flip through the slides that um, Commissioner Tyson has put together. Excellent, Abby. <clears throat> But I can't be on mute. Okay, Daphne, are you ready to roll? I think so. Okay. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I yeah. like those uh, sandhill cranes. I love those sandhill cranes. Me too. Okay, I put together uh, 14 slides that I hope to walk you guys through as briefly as possible to give you a, the context of where I'm coming from on this comprehensive plan. Daphne? The topics I've got, first of all, gives you an overall understanding of uh, where I'm coming from, um, the role of the plan commission. Then I've got a, a one slide on a matrix I developed to evaluate just the physical plan. Um, a, a number of slides, several on transportation, two on land use, one on parklands and green, the green city, one on terminology, and then I've got two on recommendations at the end. Let me try to get through this quick. Um, thank you, Daphne. Um, the, the first one is uh, regarding the role of the planning commissioner. Abby had invited us to attend various classes on the subject of the comprehensive plan and zoning and so forth. And uh, the people who are teaching that are Rebecca Roberts and Lynn Mark Markham from UW Stevens Point. They're outstanding teachers and very clear and simple um, explain it very simply. So it's, uh, I'm enjoying the classes. I've, t I've done a lot of planning before and participated. I was an intern for planning department. So this, this isn't totally new, but the, the details of what has happened most recently are particularly interesting. That aside, this, um, this is a, a piece from the handbook that they wrote on the role of the planning commission. It's the plan commission handbook. And they go out and spell what the role is, what we are all supposed to be doing. And basically the number one and primary function of, of our body is to prepare this comprehensive plan. Now, mind you, the reason I'm boring you with all this is that I joined this planning commission 11 months ago. And the first I've heard of or seen anything about this plan was, um, well, 
maybe a, more than a month ago because Abby started feeding me with some pieces of some of the, the sections. And then two weeks ago when you guys got a copy of what we were told was the final draft. So to me, it's, it's kind of a struggle because if this is supposed to be our primary function, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble with it. Okay, so that aside, Daphne, the next one. The, um, this piece is something I put together. I, when, I, when I sat down, I read through the, the pieces that Abby sent me and made some comments. And then I read through the draft we got and um, was happy to see a few changes, um, but basically had a lot of concerns. One of the biggest issues I, I have and I have concern about is the actual plan itself, the physical plan. So what I did was went through and took the um, criteria that people had, the strategies and so on, and started listing the, um, the actual criteria um, on the left-hand side of this, this matrix under the categories that are in the book, including, as you all know, land use, transportation, housing, economic development, et cetera. And I started listing your, the, the book's criteria um, and then realized that I really had a lot of trouble with some of those points. So I started making it my own criteria for the purpose of this. And then I went back and evaluated that, that uh, plan and I called it alternative one. And I started uh, listing X's for where I think we're complying with the, the strategies um, zero for where it doesn't comply and question marks where I can't tell. It's, it's hard to understand whether or not it's complying. Um, I think that this kind of thing would be a whole heck of a lot more useful and might be useful to us should we start having some issues or questions about the physical plan. If we were to sit down and compile a collaborative list of goals like this, um, and then go back separately and evaluate the plan for what those are. But let me keep moving. Next slide, please, Daphne. So starting to move into transportation. What I've got here on this slide is a copy of um, a piece that was issued in the 2050 Dane County Transportation Plan which quotes the uh, Federal Highways Association Federal Functional Classification System. And it lists what they are calling all of those highways, principal arterials, dash interstate, et cetera. Um, the third line down says principal arterials, others. That's, that's a term that we, um, not only Dane County, but Madison on their um, comprehensive plan and we on our comprehensive plan are using. Um, the reason I'm showing you this and the reason it's important is because there are definitions and what it means basically. And you, if you wanna see it, we can expand it, but I don't think you need to. What, it, what it's saying is basically, this is typically a divided road with limited or no driveways to specific parcels and at grade intersections with other roadways. It is shown as being a roadway that's consistent with 15,000 to 50,000 um, daily, daily uh, road trips. Whereas, uh, I, as I recall, our University Avenue shows 22,000. So we're, we're right in that ballpark. Um, so I think one of the key points is this, <coughs> there is a set of definitions and there is a set of understandings as to what that means. And it has a lot to do with no driveways. Okay, um, Daphne, next one, please. Moving on to the Madison Comprehensive Plan. I copied the Madison plan because as most designers know and understand well, you design well if you fit yourself into the next bigger context. You always need to know how you're gonna work with what's adjoining you. Um, Madison also uses those all that same list of definitions. You can see it on as labeled functional classification of roads. And you notice in purple, it says principal arterials, other freeways. And if you note on the plan, 
the purple shade is on Highway 12, wrapping around Madison. On the far right is the blue. That's Principal Arterial's interstate. That's uh, I-90, 94, of course. But narrowing down to the Middleton area, notice the, the red marks on here that are called Principal Arterials. That would be Principal Arterials dash other, but you know, whatever. The, um, that would be only University Avenue extending on to 14. It's showing using Allen Boulevard and it's showing Century Avenue. Now in the old days, I would have just suggested that we only be doing that with, with um, University Avenue because most of the people in, you know, in previous times would be coming in from as far north as Baraboo where, the, where I-9094 separates off, including Sauk City and all the country and surrounds for people coming in to go to school at the university or to go to work at the university or downtown or wherever, um, they would have to use University Avenue. Now, in this case, it looks like they started branching off and using Allen and Century and calling those principal arterials, which is kind of scary in this context. On the other hand, Middleton is growing. We've got Bishop's Bay and we've got the Bella, Fontaine or whatever it's called, north of town, which I still don't really understand what that all is. And basically that's, you know, that's what middle or Madison is showing and how we fit in with it. Uh, next slide, please. Likewise, the Madison Comprehensive Plan also shows the, um, the bus rapid transit system that they've been uh, developing. And most recently, and a lot of you may know this, they updated their 2050 bus rapid transit system. And from what I can see, the primary changes have been that they dropped the connection down to Verona. I would assume that relates to the fact that those 11 or 10,000 employees at Epic aren't really using buses or there are some I'm sure, or maybe not in sufficient quantity, I don't know. But looking at this, even in the year 2050, Madison is not planning on ever connecting to Middleton with the bus rapid transit system. And you gotta wonder why. You think about the fact that, well, maybe they're not seeing the, the volumes that they need, but on the other hand, maybe they're also looking at the fact that we don't have our heart in this, what, what principal arterial dash other means and the lack of driveways and the ability to make the road fast enough for a bus rapid transit system. Let's move on to the next slide. Daphne, <laughs> thank you. The, uh, no, no, the previous one. We moved two, thank you. This one is the last transportation one and it's the bike, the bike system, again, from the Madison Comprehensive Plan and how Middleton fits into it. Um, the green routes are on street um, bike lanes and the purple ones are trails, bike trails. Basically, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of trails. Um, let me first say something about the on-street. The um, on-street bike lanes, I personally, and I'm sure a lot of you have differing points of view, but I personally have a very hard time with the concept of bike riders on streets. There's no way I'm going on a street with automobiles driving around me. But I got to say that Despite what I've heard, I I live right near Gammon Road, and I can see I can see traffic moving on it. And I have only seen, or specifically counted, twelve bikers on Gammon Road's bike lanes since it was constructed, and that was a couple of years ago. So, going aside from that, my suggestion is that we. Madison obviously is going to carry on with all their grid and and extended bike lanes. But Middleton, on the other hand, has a lot of uh, the purple or the bike trails. We've put a lot into, and if you, if this, um, if the uh, label that says bicycle facilities and, and the tags on it didn't block it, you could see that, that there's a, a purple bike lane showing an existing off street facility running along highway 12, as most of you know, that's, that's, uh, that's an exercise type of condition for biking. Um, 
we've got what I consider to be uh, trails for nat naturists going through Pheasant Branch. You see on, on Middleton, there's lots of different purple trails. Um, what I think is, is the case in Middleton is that commuters would be a lot more challenged in Middleton as a result because the trails that we've got don't, aren't, aren't fast moving type trails. They're the ones in Pheasant Branch Creek that, that the bird watchers really dislike because there's a conflict of speed or lack thereof. Um, what I would love to see, and I see that when we get to the Middleton one, which I'm not showing here, Middleton is showing the potential for connecting a bike trail to this, this one that runs along um, University Avenue and or we're showing it along the railroad tracks, which is wonderful. I, I hope we can do something like that. Having fewer bike trails and focused off street bike trails may have a lot better results for us getting commuters involved in biking. Oh, okay, moving on to the next one, the future land use map. Okay, trying to transfer the transportation onto the land use map. I look at the principal arterial along the other freeways, Highway 12, and you can see the white blocking out the center of the, the plan. You look at the, the white we've got um, along University Avenue and extending out to 14, and you look at Allen Boulevard on the right side, and you look at Century Avenue. And to be honest, there's, there's like zero, zero response to the concept of no driveways or, or double, I'm, I'm losing the terminology, but the double lanes of, of uh, roadways going out on University Avenue. And then if we choose to, which we're saying we are on Allen Boulevard and Century, because what we do in turn is to run a whole lot of individual land use types that end up having to feed off University Avenue. So we've got driveways all over the place with no ability to ever get a principal arterial other <laughs> condition here, unless we, start thinking about the idea of trying to turn some of these functions around and have them face the neighborhood that they're adjoining. Um, or, you know, various, various ways and means of trying to do something like that. But these are not doing what we're talking about. These are, these are stringing out housing along University Avenue. That whole string of pink is, is what that is. Okay. Um, other discussions about focusing retail and commercial at bus stops and then trying to group housing around that is, I'm not seeing that happening here. It doesn't relate to, tra transportation is not relating to the plan, which is not relating to the various other functions we're trying to, unless I'm missing something, which is very possible. Um, and my other question is why focus housing on the highways? Okay, next slide, please. Daphne, thanks. Okay, just a few points relative to our land use plan in addition to this. Um, the concept of City Hall as a focal point, I'd love to, for us to sit down and try to find the right spot for a City Hall as a focal point. Second one is locating the collaborative spaces. Th those, you know, the uh, Senior Center, the Kids Center, the library and its how it wants to morph into in the future, it'd be great to try to figure out how that relates to our future land use plan. I'd, I'd like to understand the new plan neighborhoods, the things that are going up to the north. I, I don't know much at all about those and I've not heard any discussion whatsoever in my 11 months here among this group. Um, I'd love to understand whether we've got we're anywhere near the estimated 4,000 new households we need. You know, if, if we can start to try to put numbers to those, Abby was saying something about that a little while ago. Um, and then can we discuss what these things are and discuss them together? That's something I'd love to be able to see. Daphne, next slide, please. The one slide relate, that I have here related to the Green City. Focus, uh, this, this piece was in the plan. It's a, a very old map that I remember from a long time ago when I was on Parks and Rec Commission. But 
basically it's it's a uh, it for example it doesn't have bishop's bay the taylor park in it and some of those but the context of this thing i think is a very important criteria for the green city and and what the idea was in addition to just trying to make sure we keep 25 or 27 percent of our land dedicated to parkland as we grow and say that more specifically i'd i'd also like to see us carry over this concept of trying to make more connections between those. For example, downtown, where we're talking about potentially running a bike trail along the railroad tracks, we have the potential for a park in the parking lot and there may be other options and other ways of collecting a 10 foot strip from the backside of some of the lots and so on. Just various ways of coming up with these kind of connections if we sat and thought about it for a little bit. Um, Show rezone parkland. Um, Daphne, could I get you to go back one? Uh, one question I had on here was on the far right side, I, I understand these parks oh, way too well. Lakeview Park is on the right side. It's shown in green. It's um, in sort of the center right side. Thank you. Um, next to it is a yellow block and next to that is a blue block. The blue block is Sock Trail Elementary School. The yellow block in between is currently parkland. It's, it's what is that, the uh, Frisbee Golf setup and the drainage. The creek drains into some of the waterways around it have drained into it and it has another creek in there and, and forest. So since I see that you've changed some other parkland back to parkland on this, that one is staying yellow. So apparently, you guys are proposing to change that to single family locked in the middle of the park. Yeah, I just wanted to interrupt you really quickly. We are not proposing to change that to single family. Um, we just hadn't heard that comment yet. So we'll be happy to make that change. Okay. All right. And then across the street and down on Allen Boulevard, there's another yellow block on, on a big park that's used for soccer and whatever. I, I, you know, in that we case, it's actually not a park. It's a development site, but um, the owner of the property is allowing it to be used for soccer fields temporarily, but it is not a park. Ah, okay. So, you know, there's a lot of questions that I don't understand, and maybe maybe the rest of you do, but I doubt it because nobody that I'm aware of is talking about it. Um, Daphne, scroll on to the next one, and that yeah, thank you. This is the terminology one. There's some terminology in the, in the text that I'm a little concerned about. One is using the terminology flexible zoning laws. Um, I saw that, that um, Kurt sent out a note regarding uh, text and he, he made some comments about changing that text. And I, I agree with what he had said about it. Basically, I don't have a problem with what you were writing and what you were trying to do, but I've always had a problem with the PDD and the fact that we're up to about a third of the city being PDD now. What, what I see about that is, is that you don't want laws to be flexible. You don't want people and you don't want your city to fall apart or have potential issues. You're trying to protect the health, safety and welfare of the public. And creating flexibility is, is probably the opposite of that. And I'd truly love to see us get rid of the statements to that effect. Second point is, um, I made this statement earlier. We had in earlier versions, a lot of statements that were quite offensive. There still is one that I could find today in the, on page 20 that talks about sedentary lifestyles uh, being caused by single, occupancy vehicles and that kind of negativity. I'd love to see us get rid of that kind of stuff and just be very positive in what we're saying. Um, try, to, you know, try to explain what we're trying to do and what we want to do as opposed to criticizing people who are old and driving a car. Um, Daphne, the next page, please. So here are two pages with some recommendations I'd like to make. Uh, the first is to rewrite sections to hold a positive attitude toward what we want to achieve. Um, I'd be happy to help with my comments, should anyone care. 
Second one is eliminate sections addressing flexible laws. The third is with regard to the transportation section, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but what I'd like to see is for us to put things that have pedestrian focus and uh, street friendly concepts and put those in the collect in a section that talks about the collector roads or the local streets as opposed to principal arterials others and perhaps even put the definitions in there the federal highway associations definitions of what the roadways are and then sit down and try to do something about that on University, Allen, and Century. And then the last page, please, Daphne. So what I would like to see is, is for this whole thing to become a, a bit more interactive. What I'd like to do is develop that matrix or something similar that, that collects uh, shared goals of this group. Just go through it, come together with a, your own set of goals and, and talk through what we want on that matrix and then have it set up so we can evaluate our physical plan. Because I think we have, we have a lot of common goals, but, but the book itself covers all kinds of things in addition to just physical plan goals. And I'm just talking here about the physical plan goals. Um, likewise, have another session where we get together, just in these, our Tuesday night sessions is what I would hope for. Um, and talk about the concepts and the rationale that are in the plan. Maybe there's there's some things that aren't coming through that you know that I'm missing. Um, the third point I make here is I'd love to see plan commissioners bring in ideas for housing. We all live somewhere different in the city, and why not bring in some things that you've seen that might make offer an opportunity for housing. And you know, some of them may be hard to accomplish and some might not, but I'd like to see us try to collaborate on some of that stuff. And then lastly, um, the matrix again, if, if we get through and decide that the plan is not meeting our needs enough, or maybe, maybe it can just change to, to become better, or maybe we'd rather see a different type of plan or plans. And maybe we can, we can you know, use this seminars the Tuesday night sessions rather to put that together. And that's my set of recommendations. Well, thank you, Katie. Anyone has question or comments? Or, uh... So now I can't really see that there's any way to make a driveway on University Avenue or Century or Allen disappear. There are not too many on Allen, I think, and uh, the university, I, I can't really see that uh, that could be done at this time because there's only limited space there. Neither we can, uh, one of the reasons why we can have BRT here is that uh, we can't enlarge University Avenue and that's one of the reasons. So why it couldn't even come over there. It's gonna to come to Pleasant View Road through Mineral Point there. There are some options in any case, but the university, you can't really eliminate the driveways. So, let, and let I don't remember on Century, it's probably the similar situation. So we are sort of constrained by the, you know, what's available to us. So that's the problem, so. Well, I think, I think that the point is that this is the future land use plan and that it, if you want something to happen, you can start to try to put it into a, a plan that we can aim at. Mayor, um, yeah, but, the university, yeah, sorry, university Avenue was completely reconstructed in 2018 and 2019. Yeah. And you probably remember, and I'm sure Dan remembers that there were discussions about looking at different concepts for design of that corridor. Our, our staff actually favored an option that did add medians because we thought that it would be more pedestrian friendly. Um, we also favored trying to eliminate some of the curb cuts if we could. Um, I, I will say that we were vastly outnumbered. The businesses um, came and spoke and um, were pretty compelling in their arguments. And the Common Council voted for a plan that basically rebuilt the university exactly as it was. 
um, because that was what was favored by a majority of the people who had businesses along the corridor. And this is a 20 year plan. And I don't think University Avenue is gonna get reconstructed in the next 20 years. Yeah, I, I don't think either. So I think, uh, you know, well, anyway, if we had a blank uh, paper and we were starting, we could uh, do a lot of those things, but the way we are constrained, it would be pretty hard. So anyway, th this is a lot of good ideas there, Kitty, and let's see. Uh, but I think uh, changing these uh, uh, roads at this stage, uh, you know, would be pretty difficult, so. Um, Abby, can I, can I ask? When we do a University Avenue corridor plan, will there be an access management component to it? Because I, I think uh, what, what the mayor is saying is you can't eliminate uh, all driveways, but usually large arterials have a corridor, an access management plan, which tries to just limit the number of curb cuts with kind of shared parking or, or as, uh, as Kitty was saying, um, you know, uh, maybe a slip alley in the back of a number of businesses mm -hmm. they share. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we could include that in a draft. I don't, I'm not sure if the council would support it because they didn't go with our recommendation to close off some of the driveways previously. Um, I don't know how they would feel about that, but we could include it in the draft RFP um, as, a you know, in the document and see if they support that. Abby, how long ago was that that you proposed it? I think it was like three years ago, two or three years ago. I'm sorry, say it again. It was, um, it must have been two or three years ago because oh. the street was completely reconstructed in 18 and 19. So this was during the design phase. And Mayor, you said you cannot have BRT on University Avenue. Why was that? Yeah, because of the, there's, uh, you just have only four lanes and there's uh, no space there for a, um, special lane just for the BRT. So well, that, that's get rid of, why- mm -hmm. Get rid of a lane and run it down the middle. Get rid yeah, of two lanes, run it yeah. down the middle. I mean, you'd have to get rid of two lanes or wipe right. out a series of residential- right. two lanes. On university to make 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 room within the right of way to allow for the, the right. BRT. There are places I'm where the BRT- the council made a conscious decision at that point that that's not something we want to do politically. And also there's a part of it is in Madison too, and they didn't want to do it either. So, so that's why they went but from- they are, they are running it down, uh, at least in this, they're running it down University Avenue until Whitney Way. Yep, yep. yep. Right. They're, right. they're totally reconstructing the area around West Town right now to, to build a, a lot of uh, separated roadways. Yep. They're doing a lot of work and they're they're trying to make it happen. You know, Kenny, is I, I'm guessing if you looked at the right of way, the width of the right of way through that section. I mean, that would be interesting to look at. Yeah. You need right of way to accommodate that center, you know, rapid transit, you know, corridor. And I, I don't believe we have that, you know, in Middleton along university. Doesn't mean that we couldn't, you know, acquire additional land, but you're going to require the removal of yeah. a lot of those homes. Uh, I don't, I don't think it necessarily has to be a lot of homes, Mike, you know? Well, <laughs> if you're going to have a continuous, a continuous feed for the rapid transit system, you're going to have to take out, you're, you're going to have to expand the right of way, or as Kurt mentioned, eliminate uh, transportation Two lanes, lanes traffic, you know, which I, which is already congested. I, I think that, I don't think there's going to be yeah. enough added with the tra rapid transit system to you know, offset, you know, the need for you know, roadways there as well. For, yeah, and I, I don't necessarily think we need to get overly worried about the bus rapid transit system. Yeah. What I do think we need to worry about is calling this a principal arterial other if we aren't going to do it. I think we need to do it at least on University Avenue, not necessarily well, Allen or Century, but there's, there's no way that all the traffic that has to come and go from the north and west of our town, through our town, to downtown, is going to tolerate, you know, traveling at two miles an hour to deal with the pedestrians. We want to roam all over our streets, you know. On on the and other hand, not the right place. Looking onto a highway is not the right place for pedestrians, and that's what university really is, guys. See, Katie, yeah, we I'm talked about. 
little bit that uh, I am working very hard with the town of Westport, town of Springfield, and with Dane County to make Highway K four lane. We don't want the traffic if they don't need to come to Middleton. We don't want any more traffic coming on Century Avenue. So if there are some, uh, you know, the traffic originating in Middleton, fine, but uh, we don't want to make it just a funnel here. So we, you know, let's see if I'm successful. I would like to eliminate all the traffic uh, which comes on Century Avenue now to use, well, at least 10,000 vehicles uh, going on Highway K, rather going through Middleton. And uh, I don't know, it may not happen tomorrow or the day after, but I think uh, long term, that's what has to happen. So, so you're gonna I, send them around the north side of the airport, Gertie? Uh, no. Everything that's coming from no, the north? No, no, it will take Highway K and then up to, then it comes to 12, 12, 14 or 12, 18, and then they go wherever they need to go, so. I, um, I just want to say as a design concept that if we're a city committed to sustainability, that our primary design of a street cannot be accommodation of single occupancy vehicles at design speed. That's just an old way of thinking about managing traffic, right? We, we hope in the 20 years that they're, you know, gasoline powered automobiles will not be the primary means of urban transportation. They can't be, or the planet yeah. is dead. So, I, you know, I, yeah, I don't, if you look I don't at, want if to you fight look at, about cars. I, I agree with you on that too, Kurt. What I'm saying is we, we all a lot agree of traffic on that, one, so. that has, there's a lot of traffic that unfortunately we're in the center of. We're right smack dab in the center of a whole lot of traffic that if what you're really saying is we're, we are an island and we're gonna force you to go around us or around Lake Mendota or around the city of Madison to come up from south to get to downtown or the university, they're gonna hate us. You no, know? we're gonna we're gonna build the density near transit so that people don't even have to drive. I mean, if you look at University Avenue, you see, at least in the Madison area, you get buildings that are four stories that are closer to the street near bus lines. And that development is slowly marching its way towards Middleton. And um, you're arguing that that's not what we want. If, what, no, if that's not, what I, I hear you. I'm not at all. I'm that's, saying it's housing. It's housing you, right next to the highway. It's housing that doesn't have to look at the highway. It can be you can put all the retail and commercial and whatever around the node, the bus stop node and put the put the housing outside of that, looking at something decent instead of the highway. We've got a lot of capability of doing that with our 25% green, green space, you know. We don't have to jump on the bandwagon, the, the four story bandwagon and string the housing along highways. That's, you know, that's, maybe that's a thing right now that's going on with the 30 and 40 year olds here, but I'm not buying it. I, I think that would be a miserable way to live. And we don't look at, want to live that way. Kitty and Kurt, let's look at the future. Where is the future going? <laughs> Digital technology. You are going, to, there is going to be a lot more remote working. There's going to be a lot more Zooming. And <laughs> there's going to be less and less of, uh, hopefully less and less people driving using cars. It's going to change. It is going to change, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I like it, his idea that maybe having some kind of a retail outlets next to the road and then the tall buildings right behind it. That's not a bad idea, but where are you going to get the retail? <laughs> you, you can see what's happening to the retail there now, right? So are you going to bring the, have the little Amazons all along here? <laughs> Well, and along the University or... Avenue, the lots are really quite narrow. So, I mean, there's not really even room for an adequate terrace on most of University. And so I don't think you would get two buildings on University. That's not realistic. Uh, I think you may be right. So I, I remember when we came in 82, the University wasn't even, I don't know if it was four lane. <laughs> Uh, Kitty, I don't know when, when you came, so, so, so it was, uh, you know, nice sleepy town, 
while. So, so, so I, I, I don't remember if even if there was a stop sign at, uh, maybe I, I just had a one stop sign going to my, my work. Uh, and that was on university and uh, parliament. Uh, even if that, I don't remember it. So, so lot has changed and lot is going to change now. It's going to go in the different direction. I think uh, that is bound to happen with the new digital technologies. In any case, I have some thoughts for uh, Abby that, uh, you know, you always have to think what's the most important, where is the future that the green city, I will put in the early part, green city, and, uh, and that's where you want the action to be. And whatever you think is the most important to you and for the future of the city, that should come, that should come in the early part of your document. And uh, other is just, you know, you got on page for that duplications, governance and other stuff two times that can be deleted and there's a line used twice. And, uh, and about the, Piri, uh, you had a question about the bike path going along the railroad tracks. In 2008, 2009, Mark and I worked very hard trying to make that happen and it did not. It still stay on the map, Mark, right? But uh, the railroad uh, folks won't even let you go anywhere. Uh, I wish it had happened. It would have been an awesome thing. We were so excited, but it did not happen. It's, uh, you want to say something, Mark? Whatever happened with that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, Mayor, the 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 rail corridor is basically off limits. Uh, according to the railroad, they've been increasing their freight uh, shipments along the rail corridor, and they just don't have any interest in pedestrians and bicyclists there. Um, so it's unfortunate we don't have an option to create any paths between Middleton and Madison other than what we have along University Avenue now. Um, I wanted to also mention briefly with bus rapid transit that some part of Madison system is going to be operating in mixed traffic. It doesn't have to operate in its own dedicated lane. It's preferable, but it's not required. And when you operate in mixed traffic, you can still do signal preemption, things like that, so that a bus that's approaching in, let's say the right lane of University Avenue uh, can keep the, the signal green, for example, as it approaches so that it still has pri a priority. So, so we shouldn't be constrained in terms of thinking of the University Avenue uh, for enhanced transit just because we don't have the right of way for it. That was just my uh, observation for, from earlier. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. I, I think uh, Abby has already taken um, or adopted some of Kitty's ideas and she's gonna look at uh, more of them, see how they can fit in there. So, but you know, we've been at it for since 2015. A lot of people have worked at it. I know it, there's a lot of RBAs there and uh, it has become a very long document. And uh, so we have, uh, you know, we have paid a lot of money to the consultant as well. And I guess at some stage, you know, you have to say that, you know, we got to finish it. So, who did, but who I developed that land use plan? I mean, why have that was uh, that was Vanderbilt, I think, right? We paid forty thousand dollars to somebody there. <laughs> no, I th no. I think I think you might be thinking of. Are you thinking of the urban greenway study? No, no. There was a Vanderbilt did some part of it. Uh, I think. They, and, yeah, they helped us set up the land use section, but that was yeah. like $8,000. And we've oh. made so many changes to the future land use map now that I don't think we can <laughs> put any of this on Vandewall at this point because that was years ago. And oh, no, we are not, we're not putting on anyone, Abby. So it just, uh, I, maybe it was, well, uh, it looked like a fair amount of money anyway. So maybe it was 8,000. So. so, so we have, uh, Okay, so what, what do you want from us, Abby, now? So I have went through Kitty's comments. We can talk about it or if others have some things that you want to talk about now. But I do want the traffic not to come to Middleton out of here. So anything which we can uh, keep away from Century Avenue, keep away from the University Avenue, keep away from Island Boulevard, and uh, and they have no business of coming here. Let's keep them out of here. Then we need uh, to quit I, calling it a principal arterial because it's not. If, you, if, okay, you, well, if you're gonna decide yeah. to, to blow off Madison and blow off everything else in Dane County, then you can't use the term. Okay, well, Abby can work on the term. So 
but I don't think anybody wants the traffic. If they don't need to come here, they shouldn't come. And it will be good for them too. They save time because uh, if they if they go directly to Highway 12, you know, they they will save some time and also the carbon footprint. So, but that's you know still in the plans. It's uh, it's not going. It's more not moving forward very quickly yet. But I think in the long run, at least, you know, there was a North Marota, whatever that was, there was supposed to be that part of the battle line there, and it's not moving, <coughs> moving North forward. Parkway. Yeah. North Mendota Parkway. Yeah, North Mendota Parkway. Yeah. And maybe it, we could still try to push that one too, so. I, I would actually argue that it's been moving forward uh, incrementally in concept over the last 20 years with the improvements that have been slowly made to the Highway K quarter and what the county is doing with, with uh, widening Highway M through Highway yeah. K, I would argue that it's gradually being built. Yeah, making progress, but we don't want to make our part of the Highway M four lane. So <laughs> anyway, yes, let's go through. Okay, Jennifer, any comments, any some sage advice to um, Abby or any of the others? So. Well, I guess, um... We've got a lot of comments and and um, Commissioner Tyson has a lot of suggestions and I, I did read Kurt your um, your letter as well on the the industrial park and sort of the concept of um, concern for um, manufacturing industrial uses in Middleton and why and how we might want to change uh, or explain what flexible means in terms of the industrial area. I support that. Um, I guess the one thing I'd say in considering all of these comments is as a planner, um, there are some key things that, that I do every day and that's assessing what the current condition is and thinking about what the future might be like. And when I think about that, I have to make sure that I assess the future relative to criteria. So things that might be important, things that might be needs in a community, or um, it may not just be about looking at the context, it might be about the people. We know that the city of Middleton will gain 8,000 residents. That's not something, um, it's something that is a societal effect in what the future will be like and something that we need to make sure we plan for. So everything in the plan should make sure that we do keep that in mind. And, and there's other things like that. Um, economic development. If we make all the roads collector streets, how are we going to get people into our downtown, into Greenway Station, into areas of the community where we want people to shop, um, where we want people to go to work, you know, so maybe we change our transportation options, things like that. But we have to think about what the values of our community are and make sure that those are primary to the goal as part of the goals and we build our plan around those. Um, so I think one of the things that we're missing in this discussion is um, keeping those things in mind. They're not necessary. They're part of the goals, the objectives of the plan, what we want to provide and what we commit to provide to all the users. It's not just me. If I, you know, drive my car, I ride my bike. It's to everybody else who might not be able to afford a car in our community. Um, you know, it's to everybody who lives here. And and we also have to make sure our plan is cognizant of the fact that we do have commuters going through our community. That's just part of where we're located in this region. And what does that mean to us as a community? What does that mean to the plan? Um, those are some of the things that I think this commission needs to talk about more than, and including some of the concepts we're talking about now, but, um, you know, trying to put those things in context will really help us make some of those decisions about what we really want. Um, so those are some things that I would advise in terms of, you know, looking at our goals, 
finding what we value as community. If we're going to be a good neighbor and we're putting it on the side of a building, what does that mean, right? Um, things about our community that are important to all of us, those are the things that are important. And um, it comes through in how we plan. So um, in a practical way, there's lots of specifics in all these comments. And I, I think I, you know, I accept the recommendations and I'd like to, you know, direct the staff to incorporate them all except that first responder. I don't know how we're going to work as a commission to resolve some of the intricacies of the definitions. And, and um, Commissioner Tyson, some of your comments, I think, you know, we should talk about more and figure out how they relate to what that vision is. Um, I just don't know. Um, I guess I'd be looking toward planning staff, Abby, Daphne, Mark, um, Kelly, you know, trying to figure out how we have those conversations about our values, maybe using what's coming from the committees and making sure that those goals and um, objectives from them are primary to some of that decision making. I don't know. That'd be my suggestion. Boy, a lot of wisdom there. So, <laughs> Kurt, I see your picture there on next. So, all right, you go ahead now. Any wisdom? What do you want to share? What do you want to oh. give it to our planning planning department? I th or, I think I've already said it. Okay. All right. Okay, that's Mike, Mike Slavish. Uh, I'll, try, I'll try to be brief, Mayor. Um, you know, obviously we as individuals all have strong opinions about, you know, what we want for our community. You know, I tend to defer largely to staff with Abby, Mark, Daphne. You know, you guys have been working on this for a lot of years. I mean, what did you say, Mayor, since 2015? Yep. <laughs> and as well as soliciting input from at least 10 committees, maybe now adding three more. And I think we need to, you know, I think we need to rely on the process, rely on the professionals that are managing this. Um, there are a lot of things, Kitty, to your point, you know, I, I travel to downtown Madison every single day and back. And yes, I, it's been great during COVID because there's not been a lot of traffic. But, you know, normally it is, it is gridlock. There, there are some, there's clearly some validity in some of the concerns that you have. And I, I don't have any easy solutions for that, but I think for now, you know, we need to rely on the process, you know, all the folks that have provided input to this, all the committees and, and move forward with this plan, a plan that, you know, hopefully can be flexible and can be, you know, that we can modify you know, hopefully in the future, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trusting in the professional staff and the work that's been done, you know, the, the 40 plus hours a week that our staff puts into this and other issues, you know, because they care a great deal about this community and I, and I trust in their judgment. Thank you, Mike. That's great ideas. Now they say Dan Ramsey. Well, I would echo what Mike said. We've been working on this for quite some time and it, it's we're, we're kind of to the point where we need to finish it up. Is it going to be a perfect document? Probably not. Is it going to encapsulate everything? Probably not. But it's been a document that has gotten a great deal of input, like Mike said, from a great deal of great number of people. Um, and so I think that it, it's time we kind of try to move forward, put it together. There's a lot. Of, and it also gives us a point we, we get the document done, that doesn't mean that we're finished. It also gives us at that point, more talking points and things to move on. One of the things that's been uh, mentioned before, Kurt mentioned it tonight, and I've talked about it before, is the, uh, the importance of having a University Avenue corridor plan. So, you know, this, this comprehensive plan isn't the end, it's kind of like the beginning. But we need to we need to kind of move forward and, and get it finished. And and um, uh, this staff, like Mike has said, has spent a great deal of time on it. It's a very good document. Um, I think it's something that we can be proud of. Um, 
when the, the final product comes out and we read it, are we going to necessarily, each and every one of us necessarily going to agree with everything in it? <clears throat> probably not. We're probably going to say, gosh, why did, why did we miss this? We, we should have had this in it. But it's going to be a very good document. And there are a lot of people who have worked very hard on it from staff to committees. And uh, I think in, in the end, it's going to be something that we can all <laughs> be very proud of and something that we need to get done. This has been a very long process. And, and we need to uh, culminate it here. Excellent, excellent, uh, Len Ramsey. So anyone else who want to say anything? So, well, I'm economic development guy. So I think uh, I, I wanted to have a technology park. It isn't, uh, we are landlocked. And, uh, but uh, what I see is, uh, is uh, pretty good. And I think I will organize the chapter in the order of importance. And, uh, and th that's what I would do. And there are lots, lot of RBAs which can be deleted. I think not a bad idea. So people like uh, Chris Short and Chris and to the point, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of those things, various plans, CLC plan, PLFC plan, they can, they will all go in the appendix. If somebody wants more details, they're all there. So, so, so I think, uh, yeah, so, I'm quite happy the way it's going, and I'm sure that uh, Commissioner Kitty Tyson has made some points, and Kitty will look at them too. There are things which we can do and things we cannot do, so, and that's where we have to somehow, things we have to live with, so. Okay, what do you want from us, Abby, now? That is, that's good enough? Um, I think so, Abby. yeah. It sounded like everybody was supportive of incorporating the comments that we got from the committees and commissions for the time being. Oh, absolutely, yep, yep. Is that, if somebody doesn't speak up now, otherwise uh, Abby's uh, opinion. That and the list, and, and the list of four things that Kurt said, I, I think we all agree probably with that. He sent it today. Did you guys read it? I spent time reading your material. But I will leave the others too. But in any case, uh, so yeah. What, what she's referring to is is mostly um, making sure that we protect industrial lands from retail uses. That was the memo she's referring to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't think the retail is going. <laughs> yeah. Good point. So, anyway, what else do you want, Abby? So. Um, okay. I don't have any, I don't have anything else that we need at this time. Mark, did you have something? Okay. Well, yeah, so I heard your, uh, Abby, you said that you heard that the commission members are comfortable with incorporating all the committee comments except for the first responders. And then Commissioner Tyson mentioned that people are comfortable with Kurt's additions. Is that a consensus of the commission? I'd like to so make a recommendation to direct stuff. Can we make a motion to direct staff to incorporate the committee comments, um, except for the one about the first responder and incorporate Kerpulsen's comments as per his letter dated today? Well, uh, Jennifer, how about this says uh, staff as per the recommendation directs staff to prepare three pages in the introduction section to contain show. And okay, I will make that motion. those three pages. Yeah, three pages and just incorporate feedback from the various commissions and committee members. Yes. Well, I'm sure there are some points, uh, work with the, some of the points from uh, Kitty Tyson as well, so. Okay. Mark, okay. could you Here read back for us the uh, entire oh. minutes you have for the, dis I'm just kidding. Well, no, I, I, poor, poor Mark trying to take notes here. No, I actually want to because I'm I'm don't want us to be I want us to be on the same page uh, so that we we don't have a, a disagreement about it in the future. So um, Abby's excellent summary of all the committees, which includes uh, without including the first responder comment, we've all discussed that. Um, I've heard the letter from Paulson today. I haven't looked like at it yet, so. I have looked at that. Uh, it was actually that. Monday, I think. And when when was that sent? Because I, yeah, I for whatever reason, yesterday. don't seem to have gotten that. 
Okay, so let's just go with the committee comments and uh, we can work with Kitty's and uh, Kurt's comments later. So. Well, Jen was making a motion, so I'm, I was just going by what I heard as the motion. So Jen, and, and then but there's this, this. The the letter from Kurt Paulson is dated October 11th. It was forwarded to us on October 12th. I haven't seen it, so. Okay, how about the- uh, You wanna you know, review it quickly? No. <laughs> No, so, I don't know how. So how about this? We'll make a motion to direct staff to incorporate all of the committee comments except the first responders. And we will also include comments regarding the definitions for industrial um, as such so that they are not so flexible that they will um, not be industrial in the comp plan. Okay, I second it. And what was the comment about the introduction and, and this? Yep. Yeah, you already have that in the recommendation here. Okay, I don't have Abby's. Okay. So that's in Abby's summary. Prepare okay. three pages in the introduction to contain short term, medium term, and long term goals. Okay. Perfect. Okay, all those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, there's a motion to adjourn. Motion passes unanimously, so. <laughs> I think I abstained. Oh, you abstained? Okay. On adjournment? Uh, adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> what, if we, what if we say no, then we have to stay in the meeting longer? <laughs> No. What's the abstention on? I'm sorry. On that, uh, the. On adjournment. The last one. Oh, oh what adjournment? Okay, all right. So, <laughs> yes. All right. Let's bring all some right. beer in. <laughs> okay. Right, so we I, are adjourned. I, the so. motion for the comp plan recommendation was unanimous, and the motion to adjourn, that was a joke, I take it? The, the, uh, yeah. the abstaining? Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Go out and celebrate Thanks, now. So I'm